Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the Commonwealth showed support for its veterans this year as celebrations took place all throughout the state. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. Good morning, my name is Amelia Lee. It's just about five o'clock this Tuesday morning and today's date is November 12th. It's also time to check in with meteorologist Megan Dusmall with a look at your forecast this morning. And Megan, a bit of a cold start. When I checked my phone this morning, like 42, I think it was. So I went back in, put some pants on, came back out to start my morning. But what should we expect the remainder of the day for people who leave their house at a more normal time? Well, it's still going to be a cool day for most of the day, actually. And we're starting to see those high temperatures about where they should be for this time of year. As we look at those temperatures right now, if you're starting to head out that door in just a couple of minutes, we're really looking at the 40s around the area. So again, it's going to be a cold day. You're going to need that jacket. I know I did this morning. Amelia did too. So don't forget it as you're heading out. And even as you're going into those afternoon hours, you might still want to keep that jacket on hand, maybe a light one or a cardigan because we're not going to get much higher than 60 degrees today. Harlan's a little bit warmer as well as Middlesbrough and Jacksboro, but overall we're really looking in the upper 50s for the most part. And as we look at that satellite and radar, we're nice and clear today and that will be the story for today as we see nice dry conditions. And as you're heading out to look at that day, day planner, we're gonna stay sunny throughout the day and clear throughout the night. Amelia. All right, Megan, thank you. I cannot wait for these colder temperatures. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier opened on Veterans Day in 1921, and only a select few members of the United States Army get the opportunity to guard the tomb. WYMT's Madison Carmouche sat down with a Breathitt County native who holds that honor. There are more than 230,000 veterans in Kentucky, and while some were drafted into the service, others volunteered, and Breathitt County is no stranger to the sacrifice. We didn't have to recruit one person. Only county in the United States, not in Kentucky, in the United States. Breathitt County native Alvin Gross was selected for the high honor of guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier in 1962. I was down there eight or nine days and Sergeant Olson said, put your uniform on, troop, I'm going to post you. And, uh, <laughs> but that posting came after extensive attention to detail and the ability to follow commands. If you were in line like that with him, when they that present arms, all of you should be able to see one guard, one rifle. Everything was so precise. The precision did not go unnoticed as Gross recounts the reactions from visitors of the tomb. After a little bit, I hear one say, that's not a person, that's a robot. Said, look, he stopped at the same spot every time. And uh, some child run under that chain. And time you slept that rifle, he's gone. <laughs> Gross says he met President John F. Kennedy more than 30 times, but his greatest honor will always be his old Kentucky home. When I was there, they were out of 12 guards. They was three uh, from Kentucky. They were the Joe Lakes from Irvin and the Sterling Hired from Hazard. And I told them to make sure they put Oar Creek by my name. <laughs> Madison Carmouche, WYMT Mountain News. Alvin Gross graduated from Breathitt County High School in 1956, and he turned 86 years old in January of this year. Folks from Breathitt County kicked off Veterans Day with a parade on Main Street yesterday. The parade was led by the Jackson Police Department and followed by the Jackson Fire Department. People lined up to wave at the county veterans. Deborah Miller says it is important to remember Veterans Day is more than just a day off of school and work. I think that we need to honor our veterans. They preserve our freedom. Uh, and they, they do so many sacrifices for the American people. And I think we just need to honor them. Miller says she takes the day to remember her father, who was a veteran. Although he did not die in combat, she still honors his service. 
The Floyd County Fiscal Court invited veterans and community members to the Allen area Monday, celebrating the opening of the county's Veterans Cemetery. The Willard Kinzer Veterans Cemetery, located behind the Beaver Valley Golf Course, celebrated veterans, allowing Floyd County's heroes to be buried together on site. Organizers say the space will honor local veteran and businessman, 96-year-old Willard Kinzer, by providing for military families with his giving heart in mind. It's not just for veterans, it's for spouses as well. And that is, that is uh, something I think it's uh, an added touch. But, you know, uh, that's the good thing about it, uh, us doing it through the Floyd County Fiscal Court is that we've had, some, we've had some flexibility in what we can and can't do. For more information about the cemetery and how to apply for a plot, you can contact the Floyd County Fiscal Court at 606-886-9193. A celebration of patriotism took place in Louisville yesterday at St. Louis Cemetery. Governor Bashir was among those attending the event. The Veterans Day ceremony honored 16 black veterans who served in the Civil War and World War I. So today, our focus is on the Kentuckians who answered the call to serve in the nation's armed forces. We honor those who fought on our behalf and in our defense. We thank those who sacrificed their time, their health, and yes, even their lives. And we pray for those who continue to serve. Soldiers who were buried in unmarked graves were recognized for the first time. More than 1,000 black veterans are believed to be buried at St. Louis Cemetery. Construction is underway in Winchester for the city's Korean War and World War II memorials in downtown. The Clark County Veterans Council came up with the idea 20 years ago. Right now, there are statues behind the Clark County Courthouse to honor World War I and Vietnam veterans. However, there are only plaques to recognize those who served in other wars. The council felt that World War II and Korean War fallen soldiers deserved the same level of recognition. And we have 19 uh, soldiers that got killed in Korea in 77 in World War II and from just this community. A dedication date for the memorials has been pushed back twice because of funding issues. The Veterans Council is accepting donations to fund the project. They also say anyone who wants to honor someone at the memorial can buy an engraved brick for $100. Dogs are man's best friend, and for veterans, they can be a life-saving friend. The Department of Veterans Affairs says 7% of veterans will experience PTSD, and for those who served in conflicts this century, that number is 15%. Dogs for Valor is a Kansas-based organization that trains dogs to help manage their owner's symptoms, like depression and anxiety. Many veterans come to the program on edge and afraid to be in public spaces. A lot of times the veteran with severe PTSD is, you know, homebound. They're isolated, they're very nervous, they won't make eye contact, some won't leave the house at all. And by the end of the service dog program, they're coming out with their dogs. The training program lasts for six to nine months, but many veterans continue to attend group gatherings. Some say their family relationships have also improved since working with Dogs for Valor. Thank you for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. When we return, President-elect Donald Trump chooses more loyal supporters to join him at the White House as the new round of picks comes out. And while we're dry today, we do have rain coming up. I'll have more information soon.